for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. King, Johnny. Consolidated indemnity. Oh, hello, Mr. King. Gotta do this for us, Johnny. I can't take no for an answer. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. King. Do what? It's a new model uh, car Allied Motors have been testing. Completely under wraps. The top engineers have been working on it. Your company going into the automobile business? We're in it, Johnny, up to our eyes. The car's cracked up three times, one fatal injury. The auto company's as confused as we are. You gotta run out there and find out what the story is, Johnny. Okay, Mr. King, I'll keep you posted. Mind if I break in a few seconds to discuss games with you? How many of you, when you were youngsters, ever tried to escape from the world of reality by playing cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers? Today's youngsters have added two more professions to the world of make-believe. Spacemen and G-men. And speaking of G-men, do you know where that name came from? Actually, it was used about 20 years ago by gangsters to describe members of our Federal Bureau of Investigation. And the name stuck. It's easy to see why youngsters have added G-men as heroes to their play world, since they are a most important part of our country's protective forces. Actually, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is part of the Department of Justice and acts as a kind of detective agency whose duty it is to track down those who break our federal laws. The FBI also does counterintelligence work in ferreting out spies and saboteurs. And here's an amazing fact about our FBI men. Despite the extreme dangers of their work, it wasn't until some 20 years ago that they were given the authority to carry guns. With no other weapons than courage, resourcefulness, and determination, they had to track down and apprehend dangerous racketeers and spies. Today, however, you will find that the typical FBI agent may be a lawyer, accountant, or specialist in some other profession, but thoroughly trained in scientific police methods and handy with any type of weapon. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Consolidated Indemnity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the road test matter. Expense account items one, two, and three. Taxi to airport, three dollars and fifty cents. Plane ticket to Detroit, eighty-four seventy-five. Taxi to Allied Motors testing grounds, four fifteen. I got there before noon. There were a lot of signs around the place reading "Absolutely no visitors" and "Keep out, no trespassing." So it took me about ten minutes to persuade the guard at the gate to let me through. They were still testing cars, but the people watching the test winced as the cars thundered by, just as if they expected the autos to fall apart any second. The man I wanted to see was named McGregor. He was pointed out to me by one of the mechanics. Well, we just talking about that last lot there. Uh, Mr. McGregor? Hey, you ready, Sam? I'm Johnny Dollar from the insurance company. Insurance company? What have they got to do with us? Well, they carry the paper. I'm only here to help you, Mr. McGregor. Of course. Sorry you you thought me cut, Mr. Dollar. We've been having a time around here. Yeah, I've heard. You have? Well, uh, come along to the pits. I'll show you what's what. This is the company's model three years hence with testing. Oh, you worked that far ahead? Aye. We're planning a radically redesigned automobile. It's a big gamble. And you're in charge of the whole thing. Huh? I'm to make it work. That's been my job here for 25 years. I've seen a lot of changes, Mr. Dollar. But never anything like this. New materials, new suspension, new steering. Mm-hmm. What about these accidents? Uh, you tell me. Three so far. 
and we've got the best engineers in the world. <laughs> you expect one failure, two maybe, but three. Uh, a fiasco like this can cost the company dear. It's been kept pretty quiet. Aye, uh, but for how long? It can ruin the company. Well, come on in. I'll show you the baby the men are driving. Well, there she was. Allied's experimental model. If they'd been taking orders, I'd have signed then and there. Until I remembered that three of these dream boats, each hand-tooled and serviced by the best men the company could find and driven by crack drivers, had fallen apart on the track. The drivers? Well, the orders were to give the car every beating it could take. And the drivers knew this car couldn't take it. McGregor led me into his office on the field. Sit down, please. Thanks. Yeah. What do you make of it, Mr. Dollar? Well, it might be an inside job, of course. Someone's got a grudge against someone else, and they're working it out through the car. Uh, so, we strip down every wreck. I do it myself, personally. And do you think there's a sign of sabotage? No. No, it's not that easy, Mr. Dollar. Uh, one of the drivers, maybe. Oh, they've all been with the company for years. Maybe some of the designers. They're new boys. But our drivers, they're very experienced. I'm not talking about their experience. I'm talking about their motives. <laughs> I'm an automobile engineer, and I wouldn't know about motives. I'll have to leave that to you. Thanks. Oh, I'd like the name of the man who was killed and uh, his widow's address. Oh, of course. I'll write it down for you. Expense account item four, 85 cents. Taxi to the residence of Mrs. Grace Johnson. She lived in a nice house not far from the track. A for sale sign was posted on the lawn. I wish you'd have called first, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got in town. The place is a mess. You're uh, going somewhere? Well, you know how it is. After a horrible thing like this, you want to get away. Throw that stuff off the chair and sit down. Don't bother being polite to me, Mrs. Johnson. I'm just doing my job. You have to make it sound so clinical. Well, maybe that's the best way, Mrs. Johnson. I'll try to help you. Thanks. Who do you think might have wanted your husband killed? You think someone did? You knew your husband. Is there anybody who might have wanted him out of the way? Yes, but I... Can't be sure. I'm not asking you to be sure. I'm just looking for leads. Steve and I, that's my husband, hadn't been getting along. Seems we couldn't live with each other or without each other. I didn't know where to turn. I... Uh, these things happen, Mrs. Johnson. I turned to a friend of Steve's. One thing led to another, and pretty soon, well, we were thinking that if only Steve was out of the way. But I didn't think he would do it. I didn't. Do you know that he did? Of course not. But he hasn't been to see me once since. I'm getting out of this place. It's like a bad dream. What's your uh, friend's name? It's Simmons. Joe Simmons. What does he do? Do? He used to be a test driver with Allied, same as Steve was. Oh. May I use your phone? Yes, of course. I'll show you where it is. Simmons had worked for Allied, all right. One of their best men. He'd quit after the Johnson accident. When I went to the address he'd given as his home, I found he hadn't lived there for six weeks. But his landlady said he liked to stop in at Kirby's Bar and Grill down the street. And she believed he still lived in the neighborhood. Yes, sir? I'm looking for Joe Simmons. You come to the right place. Joe, you got a friend. That's him over there. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Simmons? Yep. I'm Johnny Dollar. I'm with the insurance company interested in the Allied Motors business. A cop? No, we're just the people who pay off the claims. They've asked me to look into it. Why do you come to me? I thought you could help me. Kelly, two more. You'll join me, won't you? Yeah, I'll play with it. Coming up. How much do you know? Well, I know Steve Johnson had a pretty wife. Oh, you've been seeing her. And she told you how she cried on my shoulder. I suppose she... Also told you I let her on or something? Put him on my tab, Kelly. All right, Joe. I'm a little tin god, Dollar, but Steve was my friend. 
If I took his wife to the movies or out to dinner, he knew about it, even though she didn't know he knew. That sounds complicated. You know, he was crazy about her. He was trying to keep it going. He thought I could straighten her out. How come you quit driving? Well, that car's not right. I've been test riding too long not to know that. Allied makes the best cars in the business. You're telling me? This one handles like a bar of soap. It does everything but answer your mail. Then suddenly, wham! For no reason, it falls apart on you. You tell me a car like that's all right. Every car or just some of them? How would I know? Well, maybe some of the cars could have little bugs put in them. Like uh, if one driver was in the way. I get you. You still think I did it because I was going out with Grace? Yeah, something like that. There's only one thing wrong with your hunch, Dollar. I'd have to get to the car. They watch them like crown jewels. You could figure out a way. And I'd have to want to do it. I told you I wasn't double-crossing Steve. He knew I was seeing Grace. Do you know you and his wife were thinking how nice it would be if he were out of the way? I'll leave the tip. And, uh, Mr. Simmons, I wouldn't leave town with a widow just yet. Expense account item five, $2.60. Cab fare to my hotel, where I put in a call to Mr. McGregor. He wasn't available, but they promised me he'd call me back. I left word with the desk to be sure and page me, and I went down to the dining room where I told the head waiter I was expecting a call. I hadn't got around to my coffee when I was paged and told that someone was waiting for me in the lobby. Dollar? Yeah. Sergeant Ferris, police department. I hear you're digging into the Allied crack-ups. Our company's paying for them. Got any ideas? No, nothing startling. Open and shut. Let's get off our feet. I was uh, hoping an outsider would turn up a fresh approach. Oh, I like the old one, Sergeant. It's neater. Show me how. Well, you'll have to bear with me if it sounds familiar. <laughs> Husband and wife fight. Husband's best friend has a broad shoulder and a narrow conscience. Problem? How to get rid of husband and maybe pick up a piece of insurance on the way. All that remains, Sergeant, is to figure what was done to wreck husband's car and how friend tried to get away with it. Well, it's neat. I'll say that for your theory. But it won't work. Why not? It's worked before. I'll give you one small reason. Joe Simmons doesn't work for Allen any longer, right? Right. And I just had another crack up out there. Ouch. What happens now? Well, I've made my little spiel. You tell me. Here's a rich company with all the know-how and talent in the world. And they can't make a car safer than that. Something's got to be wrong. Well, that's not a conclusion, Sergeant. That's a beginning. Well, I'm coming to that. The police department hasn't got enough to go on, so I kind of figure it's your baby. Meaning what? Hang on. The insurance company's got to find some evidence of at least criminal negligence before we get interested. Uh, officially, that is. We want you to go to work out there. Work? Driving. Driving? But they're cracking up on And if you're lucky, one will crack up with you in it. Then we'll know something. If I live through it, that is. We want you to do that for us, Dollar. It's important. Will you? Ah, the things I get involved in. All right. Good luck, Johnny. Yeah. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He never wanted to be president, since he personally felt he was unqualified for the office. When he was only 30 years old, he was appointed member of the Ohio Superior Court. He was President Grant's Secretary of War and Attorney General. In 1908, through the recommendation and support of Theodore Roosevelt, he succeeded Roosevelt as president. If you don't have his name by now, here's another clue. During his administration, the Postal Savings Plan and Parcel Post were established. Who was he? William Howard Taft, 27th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. <laughs> Now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Hey, 
Jim. Throttle her full. All right, Jim. Kill it. Kill it. Ah, come on. All right, everybody. Back to work. Back to work. Have her towed to the shop and take her down. Why don't we just smell her for scrap and save the trouble? Uh, come on. Come on, Bill. Let's go. Let's go. What made it go to pieces, Mr. McGregor? Uh, ask the engineer who designed it. I got a better idea. And what's that? Put me to work. Driving. There are some things you can't learn at second hand. Oh, you're kidding, of course. No, Mr. McGregor, I'm not. Huh. Very well. You got a minute, Dollar. Do I get the driving job I've or not? I've got something in my office. It ought to give you an idea or two. After you. Care for a weed wrap of the stuff? Not elegant, but uh, cheaper capsule, sir. There you are. Uh, cheer. Never used to drink on the job, but believe me, since they put this new model on me, it's a necessity. What about my job, Mr. McGregor? I don't think you'll be needed. Why not? Come here. Here's something I dictated for the top brass. You'll see why. It's on the dictating machine now. Yeah. Here it is. Memo to Mr. William T. Thorne, chairman of the board, Allied Motors. From Ken McGregor, head department development and research. Subject... New model. Uh, it uh, begins with a lot of personal stuff. You know, how I've been with the company for so many years, that kind of thing. And uh, here's where it really starts, I think. <laughs> and it is my considered opinion that the projected design ought to be dropped entirely. Further test driving ended in the interest of the company's reputation and my men's safety. Furthermore, if I may suggest, we ought to return to the traditional ways of developing our cars which have stood us so well... Well, that's it, Mr. Dollar. And uh, what if they don't approve? They've got to. And if they don't, do I get the job? Surely. But they've got to, Dollar. They're not crazy. They'd read the memo in the executive offices by the time I got to them. They were inclined to agree with McGregor... And it took some fast talking on my part to convince them they should keep the experimental models testing. The insurance company had a lot of money invested in those accidents, if they were accidents. And I didn't see folding up my tent and stealing into the night without some explanation. They gave the test one week more. Meanwhile, I went to see the man responsible for the car's design. Come in, please. I'm Johnny Dollar from the insurance company. Is your chief Ted Brand in? I'm Ted Brand. Then uh, I'm supposed to talk to you? Sure. What do you say we do it over something to drink? Yeah. Yeah. When he said something to drink, he meant coffee. He was no more than 22 or 3. And that's what threw me when he told me he was the man responsible for the radically redesigned car of the future. So there you are, a new car from top to bottom. Science can't stand still, neither can automotive design. They had lots of trouble with the first jets, remember? Well, then you think it's, uh, well, uh, birth pains? Did I say that? No, Mr. Dollar. That motor, that car is as perfect as anything can be. On paper, it should handle like a dream, and it can. I know it can. Oh, you'll find a lot of old guys who are against anything just because it isn't the way it always was. These are the same guys who are opposed to pneumatic tires, then four-wheel brakes. They just hate progress. You follow me? Yeah, I think I do. This car has got to work, that's all. Just like two and two's got to make four. How about another cup of coffee? No, thanks. You have a cup on me. I've got somewhere to go. Expense account item six. Taxi to the residence of Mr. Kenneth McGregor. One dollar and sixty cents. I waited till well after dinner before dropping in. Yes? Uh, my name is Dollar. Is uh, Mr. McGregor in? No. Well, do you expect him soon? 
Well, if he's not here by this time, I can figure he won't be home at all. Can I help you? I'm Mrs. McGregor. Well, I don't... They're working him awfully hard at the plant these days. He's been staying there nights a lot recently. Oh? Maybe I can talk to you. Won't you come in? I'm so glad for the company, Mr. Dollar. With Mr. McGregor away so much, I tell you I just pine for someone to talk to. Can I fix you a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thanks. Nice place you have here. Thank you. We like it. The company has been very good to Ken. He's been with them a long time, you know. I guess he must like his work. Oh, he loves it. They wanted him to retire several times, but not Ken. Offered him a pension, too. But I guess they realize he knows more about cars than anyone in the whole world, I do believe. He seems to work hard, staying away so late, missing dinner. Oh, he wasn't always like that. He works hard, but he's also a family man, do you know what I mean? But lately, he's had so much on his mind. The way I see it, he wants to make one more showing before, well, before he does quit. Yes, I see what you mean. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I have to go. Oh, do you have to? I was enjoying our talk so much. So was I. Oh, uh, Mrs. McGregor, I wonder if I could ask something of you. Of course. Don't tell Mr. McGregor about this visit. I mean, it's nothing to worry about, but... Uh, I understand, young man. In years past, before they pushed him aside, lots of you boys used to come out and see us. I won't say a word. Thanks a lot. Good night. Good night. And there it was. A man who'd given a lifetime of loyalty. And now he was drinking on the job, staying at the shop all night, hating the new model car. I wondered how I'd feel if I suddenly found myself outdated. Outdated by a kid full of new, fresh, crazy ideas. Then I remembered that a man named Steve Johnson had died. That they'd had four crack-ups and might have others. Johnny Dollar. Sergeant Ferris, Johnny. Can you come out to Allied? It's important. What's happened, Sergeant? Another crack-up? Murder? Who? McGregor. Excuse us, please. Excuse us, please. Let us through. There it is. Just the way it was found this morning. Seems to have been quite a struggle. It does for sure. He spent the night here. How do you know? I went out to his house last night. He's been staying away a good deal. I guess he was pretty sore at what he thought the company was doing to him. So he went and got himself killed? He got me there, Sergeant. Did he uh, go out for dinner or anything last night? The guard at the gate said he left around midnight. Was back in an hour. Did he make any calls? Switchboard's closed at that hour. He had a direct line. That's all you know, then? Someone came to see him. How? Oh? Yeah, hold your horses. It was early in the evening. He left hours before it happened. They check everybody in and out through the gate. Uh-huh. I get it. There's some guy who used to work for him or something. The man at the gate knows him. Who was it? Uh, Simmons. Joe Simmons. It, uh, he was checked out before 10, like I told you. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you to your work, Sergeant. <laughs> I went to Kirby's Bar and Grill, but Joe Simmons wasn't around. He'd been around last night, but they hadn't seen him today. Well, there wasn't much I could do. It was a police case now, all right. So I grabbed a cab and went back to the hotel. Expense account item seven, cab fares. 120, 260, and 140. I was just letting myself into my room when... Uh, are you Dollar? That's right. Can I come in? I want to talk to you. It's about the car they're road testing over at Allied. Yeah. Come on in. Thanks. Uh, maybe I'm a stoolie, but... Well, murder's not in my line. What are you talking about? Uh, this guy who got killed, that driver, Johnson. Yeah, it was a risk he had to figure on, but... 
Now, killing the old man. I'm through. I had nothing to do with it. I'll take my rap for what's coming to me, but not murder. Why don't you go to the police? Well, I figured you could help me. Well, don't count on it. All right, go ahead. Tell me who you're talking about. Simmons. Simmons was checked out of the test area two hours before it happened. That's what you think. McGregor picked him up later and brought him back. He was crouched down on the floor in back of the car. Why? Well, they were worried about you. You were going to drive. That meant that you'd have to get the business like Johnson. Simmons had to talk the old man into it. They were working together? Simmons was working for a stockholder who got booted out of the management when it was discovered he'd been mixed up in rackets. He wanted to hurt the company, and he had what it takes to do it. Well, Simmons knew the old man was sore because the company was scrapping after all these years. Well, little by little, he got the old man to go in deeper. But then they had this beef about you. The old man realized what he'd done, and he wouldn't go for it. Well, you know how it wound up. Where's Simmons now? I'm waiting for me at the Kearns Hotel. Will you take me there? Yeah, sure. Wait till I call a friend and tell him where to meet us. service revolver. All right. Go on in. Okay. I'm back, Joe. Well, what took you so long? Did you get the tickets? You're not going to need any tickets. Oh, yes, sir. Expense account total, including return fare, $217.40. Remarks. The name of the stockholder has been submitted above, and he is currently held by the police. It is my belief he'll be able to reimburse your company for all the claims you've paid out. Uh, from jail, of course. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by David Chandler with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Fred Mackay, Bill Johnstone, Virginia Gregg, Ted Bliss, Clayton Post, Hi Everback, Eleanor Audley, and Joe Kearns. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at the same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.